to me, just the language, the language in that is is mind boggling. You'll take him back. He, you think he's crawling the? Co- is he blowing you up or something like that? Like what? 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, that sounded like Three Stooges just now. <laughs> Tonight, that main in Spain is mainly off the chain. U-A-W, U-A-W, that spells unity. Or some, something like that. Boom, boom, boom. Why Tyrese girl would act like that? See these stories and more on the Black Man Show. Welcome to the BS. Now come see what we talk about. Let's go. What is good? What is good? This is the Black Man Show. And once again, I am Seven Blackman. And this week's show has been sponsored by the good people at Bandana Boy Tees, bringing you tees that set you free. With a closeout sale currently being had on their F Around and Find Out collection, sparked by the events of this summer's Alabama Brawl. Ah, who can forget the summer of love when a simple man was merely doing his job and he was attacked on those Montgomery docks? And then he sent out the bat signal. And that's when the teams were alerted to assemble. They came, one if by sea and many if by land, because, you know, generally we don't like to get our hair wet. But all in defense of this gentleman. And all types of things were in the air, you know, fists and, you know, tempers, sure. But thankfully, there was even a chair. But even after that, cooler heads prevailed and the rightful were actually arrested and justice was served. And look, they even made a couple of designs for the show. Be sure to get your never forget memorabilia today. Hit the link in the description and get 25% off your FAFO order and I am sure you will dig it. So if you are looking for your opportunity for a sponsorship or anything like that, be sure to hit us up at showtheblackman at gmail.com. And with that said, hit the like and the subscribe so we can get to the news. I'll wait. Thank you. Let's go. I don't know. Y'all may have to start a little bit earlier this time and whip out the brown liquor for this one. So, because I'm just saying, I, I just know this is going to be kind of a doozy. So, okay. First of all, our hearts and thoughts absolutely go out to the people of Maine, in particular to the people of the town of Lewiston, where this gun nut and man alive no more, Mayo Man, that's what we going to call him, savagely ravaged the area for several days last week resulting in a two-day manhunt ultimately ending in his death but not before taking the lives of 18 injuring 13. this actually marks the end of the order put in place in nearby androscoggin and northern sagadaha counties for citizens to shelter in place many businesses schools and other facilities in the area were closed during the time as well so what happened that caused the man to take the punk ass route after wreaking all that havoc taking himself out somewhere near the place where he was recently fired Well, here's what we know so far. Apparently, back in July, the National Guard officer told superiors that he was hearing voices and wanted to hurt other soldiers. At this time, he was referred for a psychiatric evaluation, which took place shortly thereafter. Well, two weeks after that, he went and purchased the weapons that he'd eventually end up using on his heinous shooting spree. No one knows exactly what set the presumed gun enthusiast off, but authorities are working on a theory concerning his recent break from his girlfriend, and some are speculating that the bowling alley and the bar where he, where he created those victims were places where he and his girlfriend used to frequent. Now, let's keep it real. Whatever the motive, there's no denying that the pain and the trauma to shoot the cars reverberated throughout the state, affecting countless lives. The scenes at the bowling alley and the bar, unimaginable. Places meant for relaxation, a game or two with friends, maybe a drink after work, turned into an absolute nightmare. And let's not forget the fear and anxiety to grip those counties during the shelter-in-place order. Parents not knowing if their kids will return from school, Businesses facing potential damage and an entire county living in fear of this unhinged dude. I mean, you don't know what he's trying to do. And on top of that, the information we have about the shooter's state of mind prior to the shooting, hearing voices, wanting to hurt others, and undergoing psychiatric evaluation only amplifies the need for a more robust 
system to assess and monitor individuals who pose potential threats to themselves and others. I mean, how do you go let somebody with all these warning signs buy a gun? I mean, it, it, it's just, it's, it, it just don't pass the common sense test. Basically, you, he's hearing voices. He says he wants to shoot people. He has a psych evaluation. And weeks later, he buys a gun. <laughs> but with this tragedy, it is evident that our society has some serious thinking to do. How many more times will we have to grieve and mourn before enough is enough? The gun laws, our approach to mental health, the way that we handle domestic issues, all of it needs a hard, no-nonsense look. And this is coming from your boy, Seven. You know I don't really talk this politics stuff too much or, or really try to get into the weeds too much. I mean, I know I can. We can. We can, we can go there. But generally, that's not my, my, my lane, and that's not what I'm trying to do, uh, particularly on this show. But when it comes to stuff like this, I just can't help but to chime in at least a little bit, at least from the fringe, at least from the cheap seats, and just say, uh, how about we actually do something to make sense instead of just flapping our gums and, and kicking the uh, can down the road? You know what I'm saying? Just, 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 you know, just little things like that. Moving on. Bottom line, we can't afford to keep ignoring these signals, y'all. I mean, it's, it's time for a change. It's time for better intervention, tighter regulations, a genuine commitment to the safety and well-being of our communities. This, this ain't just about this shooter. This is about preventing the next shooter. You know what I'm saying? So let's remember Lewiston and, and all the other towns, you know, Parkland and, and, and Columbine and all the other towns and stuff like this is happening. But damn it, let's act like we actually give a damn about the babies at some point. At some point. Can we? Can we do that, please? So one of the stories I didn't have the time to cover last time was the next chapter in the seeming everlasting tale of bull that goes a little something like this. Juicy Smouillet is a very French, very famous French actor. He was the victim of a, a racist and homophobic attack. You see, Juicy Smouillet is <laughs> gay and he is black. Not just French. When he was walking down the street late at night, two white men came out of the shadows with MAGA hats on and beat him up. Tied a rope around his neck, called him all kinds of niggas, and put some bleach on him and ran off into the night. The whole country was up in arms. He was talking about it all the time on the news. And, and for some reason, African Americans, we were like oddly quiet. We were so quiet about the shit that the gay community started accusing African American community of being homophobic for not supporting him. But what they didn't understand is that we were supporting him with our silence because we understood that this nigga was clearly lying. That's right. On a cold winter's night in Mickey freaking Chicago, this dude said that he was racially and homosexually attacked by racist white men, again, in downtown Chicago. Minutes away from the Gold Coast and Boys Town, these men who basically just chose to attack this man, clearly for the color of his gay skin, <laughs> right off the lake, and and then was bleached and 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 and, and maga had it and and and, and noosed <laughs> before they darted off at 1:30 in the morning. Wait, I'm sorry, no, 1:30 in the mother loving ass morning <laughs> and as mr chappelle said well none of that has happened so why are we talking about him today right well it seems senior soprano siren sinister since has seen it necessary to sit his black ass down somewhere what I mean is the man has basically checked himself into rehab. Now, one may be wondering for what, or better yet, from what. Now, while we do know that he has had access to various substances, thanks to the Nigerian princes of lore, uh, as of yet, we have no other information about his rehab check-in other than the fact that they sent a statement that says that he is, quote, had an extremely difficult past few years and has quietly been working very hard for some time and they are proud of him 
for taking these necessary steps, as a representative of the Juice Crew has told to TMZ. I know I, for one, understand. With the rigor that it takes just to get a show like this one up and running, you know what I'm saying? I can only imagine the amount of brain power that it takes to conjure up a plan like that and then to try to weaponize victimhood on such a scale where you think you're going to try to benefit on the back end or something like that and why you negotiating and trying to coordinate with two Nigerian princes? You know what I'm saying? I, I'm just saying, I, I know that's a whole lot of work and 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 listen just k kudos k kudos can, can we get a golf clap going for for me when i when i i bet that's a whole lot of work dude um for, for you to coordinate and get the steps to go on uh, um you're trying to tip off how it's gonna happen uh, or, or tipping off to them that it's about to happen without tipping off to everybody else that it's about to happen while in the midst of producing your own version of basically what's like New Jack City, the musical, you know it was. <laughs> and I, for one, I'm just saying, I'm glad that he is finally getting the help that he needs after a well-directed three-man show. Do you know how hard that is to coordinate all of that? And I, for one, think you deserve a well-deserved round of... Y'all are something else. I mean, after having to pay $120,000 in restitution for lying to the court and abusing Chicago City services, claiming to be the gay Tupac, fanning the flames of our fears when saying that if you died on your 150-day county jail stint for lying, then it wouldn't be of your own choosing while maintaining this so-called innocence. Even after them brothers gave the info of the plan from start to finish, they told about where you ordered them, how it was to play out, and even proof of your payment. I, I, I believe they call those receipts. But yeah, after all of that, I say it's well past time for your rest. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for the fact that this news just kind of appeared across my feed, I wouldn't have known anything about what's going on on your side of the family tree outside of whatever's going on in Journey's world. And, and shout out to Journey. Remind me, how long was your grandfather a member of the Ku Klux Klan? Did you bond with your grandfather about the KKK? Did you share some bond? Did you share some love about the Bernie Cross? Did you go to any uh, KKK rallies with your grandfather, Mr. Allred? But lastly, I think it's interesting to outline one thing. Sir, you have said um, that if you had actually done this, you'd be a piece of shit. And you don't think that's really questionable. Well, I think the first step in rehab is uh, acceptance. And with that, we'll be moving on. <laughs> Yo getting into some relations is some wild stuff and ain't for the week and definitely takes more than flowers cards and candy to get you through it but with what we've been seeing this past week with tyrese man look just pass the popcorn and that brown liquor because <laughs> homie been going through it i mean he been through enough for real if you ask me look so okay here, here's where we are uh the r&b Transformers, Fast and Furious star, known to those of us from the 90s um, for his Coca-Cola commercial. has recently been back in the news lately due to his ex-wife, Samantha, doing her best Jada impersonation and putting her mouth to any microphone that allows her to speak into it, uh, allegedly. And she's been doing so for a very particular reason. Basically, his ex-wife of three years, with whom he shares a five-year-old daughter in the heart of passion, and after a myriad of conversations with her lawyers at Tyrese's expense, decided to pursue divorce proceedings when apparently Tyrese didn't even know the reason. 
Check it out. In regards to how abrasive uh, my marriage ended, you know, my ex-wife just like woke up and just said, I'm out. And I still don't know why to this day. And uh, so I got a new single featuring Lenny Kravitz. I don't think you ever loved me. I would love for y'all to hear it. Going back to that situation, do you think, do you still try and figure out why? Or do you just kind of like ignore it? Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out why. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah those are real problems. Facts. Yeah. After that, she got a little work did, became a YouTube relationship guru, and, well, that's, that's I don't know. That's, that's basically about it. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what else the girl does. I don't know nothing about it. She do something in social work. Who knows? She make $160,000 a year. But that's from social work. But on top of that, she got, you know, all this money. I mean, she won over $10,000 a month in child support for their daughter, over $400,000 <laughs> in his and her lawyer fees. Uh, if you really want to get a breakdown of how the lawyer fees and all this stuff is going, look at uh, the, the lead attorney. I, I'll leave a link to his uh, to his uh, uh, breakdown in, just in the description so you can check that out. But uh, the lead attorney gives a good breakdown of how those finances broke down for Tyrese and kind of some marks that he missed in his prenup that ended up having him owe or having him pay for her attorneys as well as his, even though he had a prenup that said he wasn't supposed to. On top of that, $17,000 for a special master who did basically the financial arbitration. And then another quarter million dollars in back child support because apparently the $2,500 that he was given to her for two years before that wasn't enough according to the courts. And real quick about that child support, I mean, it, it's that's the dumbest thing I, I never seen. I ain't gonna lie. Basically, the judge looked at the amount that he was paying for his uh, paying the support for his teenage daughter, uh, and they just basically doubled it. Only thing is, fun fact: uh, teenage daughter lives in L.A. Uh, Five-year-old daughter lives in Atlanta. Cost of living in L.A. is way different than in living in Atlanta. And, but they was like, but the court in Atlanta was like, you know what? You're paying this much here. You're going to be the same over here. And that was just it. Period. <laughs> but I digress. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm guessing because she ain't built up her name in the street strong enough. Or she needed to go viral again. Something. It Basically, that that's, that's all it seemed to me. So now she's talking about how she wants to basically take Tyrese back. Are, are you now in the spirit of potentially even being able to rekindle a relationship like Oh my gosh, you just asked me this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can we get an edit? Uh, <laughs> oh, is that a hard Jesus. question? It is. It's, a, it's, it's loaded because of the fact that there's been so much that's happened, you know? Like, there's been so much that's occurred. Um, okay. my daughter's father and this is like after the mental break after the reconciliation of dj envy's marriage after will smith supposedly giving tyree several million dollars in support i mean look one man was going through it and taking all of us dog skin men back about 30 points i mean he, 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 look he, even though they both was men of melanin that's that's actually more points than, than what we lost when kevin hart roasted don Cheadle. But at the same time, like I said, and me, you know, I'm 56 years old. Damn! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because it was a sorry. thought. No, no, seriously. It was Dude, a thought. It was I'm a not, thought, and I blurted it out. I'm I did fine. not mean it that I'm way. Not, I'm fine. Okay, but just not, understand, I didn't mean it the way it came let's, out. We'll take a poll on how you meant it. So now we got Sister Samantha out there claiming to everybody who's going to listen to her about how much she was wrong and, and how, how much the, she wished he, she, he, he would take her back. And actually, she didn't even say it like that. So l let, let me not even act like that because she, cause even in this state, it's kind of wild that she's the one who did this, you know, left him, uh, pursued him, got him, gouged him, and now she's saying that she would take him back. That to me, just the language, the language in that is is mind boggling. You'll take him back. 
he you think he's crawling the is he blowing you up or something like that like what 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, that sounded like the Three Stooges just now. Like, what do you, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? He, he's going, he's coming back to you. You, you would, you would take him back. It, and and then it's like there's this conditional stuff. And and of course we don't know the inner workings of anybody's relationships for real. You know, so all we get to see is you know the the image that they portray out in the the zeitgeist. But still. Just from what we can glean from what we've already seen, Forrest, it's like, dude, just, <laughs> he ain't, he, he's already got another woman. He got a whole other woman. So you ain't even worried about this other woman. You just want to hit the scenes and start talking about how you would take him back. Did you tell him that? Well, I guess you did. He did say that you did. But still, he ain't, he ain't checking for you. What are you doing? What are you doing? Is the money not enough? Is having the back support, back child support not enough? Is the embarrassment that you've already put on him not enough? What else do you need? I mean, other than the fact that this is the, okay, the mother of his child, and he actually was fighting to make things work, you know, to keep things together. And, and, and of course, it makes sense as a man or, as you know, as, as any Somebody who has a child with somebody to try to stay with the person you made the child with to raise the child together in that home so the child can be raised in the energy that you made the child in. You know what I'm saying? That makes the most sense from that perspective. However, comma space, is one of the people in there already trying to gouge the other person for, for bread and then trying to hit them up, just use that drop their name for internet clout? I mean, because doesn't that change the equation? Just eat, j just a little bit, just, just a little bit. I mean, it's like all the things she basically did to establish herself off of his name. It, that's the part that kind of is getting me, and it's like it, it, it doesn't have the cachet almost. It doesn't have the cachet, and it doesn't carry it with it the cachet that she thought it was gonna carry. So now she's got it you know double back she had to double back to go get it get get a second dose to get some more so she can keep going wherever it, I, I don't again i don't know i'm just saying this is kind of how it seems and, and it just all seems messy and it's just and then you think about it, like she she got three not one not two but almost three lawyers and lawyers are not cheap divorce divorce lawyers are not cheap and divorce lawyers for entertainers and celebrities, especially in not cheap. <laughs> so you got three, oh, almost three, two, two lawyers that you had at Tyrese's expense. At this point, the only way I can see him taking it back is if it's to keep the money right. And I don't know, he got the world's tightest prenup and he got judges in his pocket. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It, it just it just don't make no sense to me. It don't make no sense to me that if he's actually contemplating, if, if he were to be contemplating going back, which it doesn't seem like is the case, but if he were to be contemplating such a movement, I would probably, <laughs> listen, again, Dark skin brothers, we 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 need a number. We we need to get our numbers back up. I'm just saying, we got to do our thing. Kanye, I don't. Is he dark skin? Uh, yeah, he's brown. I don't know. What what? Akon, come on, Wesley. You know, only thing we got is a uh, a uh, uh, homie from. Oh, we we got Damson Idris. And we got uh, other the other Idris, not Idris Elba. We got Damson Idris, Idris Elba, and uh, and 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 the other Idris dude. I, I can't remember his name, but you know he he from that show. I'll, I'll show it right here. That that guy. His, I think his name is Idris too, or Aldis or Idris or something like that. So we we got them, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. We gotta get our we gotta get our dark skin melanated numbers up. That's all I'm saying. I just think it's wild that this woman is just essentially acting like she's trying to get that old thing back. I don't know if she I, I don't know if it's legit, but it, 
I just think it's wild that she's acting like that, at least for, for the camera. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just glad that Tyrese ain't playing a dummy or 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 the fool or nothing like that because he peeped her coming a long, long time ago. This shit is about money. You've hired three law firms trying to fucking suck me dry. I'm approaching a million dollars in legal fees and we had a prenup. You already tried to ask me to come back. You already tried to reconcile. I told you I was in a relationship. Everything about the way you left me was heartless. It was evil. You never considered me, your marriage, and let alone your innocent one-year-old child. She had to celebrate her second birthday apart. So if you had people in your ear at the time, they must be still in your ear because you're still trying to get $20,000 a month for a five-year-old you make $160,000 a year on your own. This is all a game. You're clout chasing, playing on single mothers and their emotions, playing on women that are actually in abusive relationships and fucked up marriages that are toxic and dark and dysfunctional. That's not what, what, what that was. But seriously though, why do you think Samantha's trying to get back at this man now? I mean, it's not like she's planning or made any plans to give back that man's money or to call the lawyers off or I, I don't know. Have you have you all read or seen any stories or anything like that that says that Samantha's calling out the lawyers, call the dogs off or the wolves keep pulling them back? Anything like that? Please let me know. Correct me. Let me know if there's been a change because as far as I know, ain't been that. You know what I'm saying? So what are we talking about? So is it just, so if, if that's not the case, is it like just clout chasing? You know what I'm saying? Using a coalition of single mothers nationwide to online garner some sort of unmerited support? You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you think are her ultimate motivations? What will be yours? I don't, let me know in the comments down below. So if you've been anywhere near the show, come and talk to me starring Cameron and Mace or any sports show recently. You've probably or possibly um, heard some whisperings about what's going on in the life of former Washington Wizard, Rocket Magic, and former LA Laker, where Kobe showed him all the love, Dwight Howard. <laughs> Seen here showing exactly how big he likes it. Seems the eight-time NBA All-Star can do quite a thing with those balls. Apparently, he and the strange lover, Stephen Harper, have been having an on-again and off-again relationship since 2021, when the two met like any normal couple these days in the DMs of IG. Now, I will not get into the salacious, and believe me, these are salacious details um, <laughs> of what transpired between Howard and Harper. But I will say that I've never word, uh, I, I've never read the word threesome so much in any work article of print where a vagina was not involved. Never, ever, ever. With Harper having come forward with a similar allegation toward Howard a year ago, as well as a so-called former ex claiming to have been followed by goons trying to intimidate him into signing an NDA, is it any wonder that Kobe called him soft? And look, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it because he's a homosexual, practicing homosexual, or some somewhere in between. I, 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 I don't know the letters. I don't, I don't know the letters. But no, I'm saying it. I'm saying it because he, he called himself because the dude can't keep his affairs in order. He can't keep his shit together. Look, regardless of who it is you out there sticking, if they running and telling, especially if they ain't, that ain't what you want them to do, then they ain't the one for you. So if you still are messing with messy people um, who can't help but be messy, then you deserve whatever the hell mess gets on you. you even if that man made the man. Look, uh, look I, okay, all right. Move, next story, next story, let's go. <laughs> I, I can't, I, I try, I, I try. 
All right, y'all, let's jump into the four Mustang of labor news because it seems the United Automobiles Workers or the UAW have shifted from park to fifth gear and they are cruising on the highway of change. Sean Fain, the UAW president and little brother of T. Fain, made a groundbreaking move. He's not just inviting the other kids to the playground. He's saying, hey, if we're going to play tug of war against the billionaire class, let's all pull together. A synchronized labor line dance, if you will. You know what I'm saying? You some Cuba, Cuba chapels or some, <laughs> some wobbles. But look, this isn't your typical pick a sign holding strike. So the UAW went for the hat trick by targeting all three Detroit bigwigs, Ford, GM, and Stellantis, who apparently couldn't decide on a single car name, so they just smashed a few of them together. What is their aim? Bigger paychecks, bigger perks, and reversing some old concessions that feel as outdated as a blockbuster membership. I know, I know. I just I just found my card not too long ago, so I I, I can't even I can't even trip. Nelson Lechtenstein, the labor historian and not a character from a Wes Anderson film, hailed these changes as historic and transformative. Let's be honest. If strikes for movies, this would be actually like, I don't know, one of the Avengers movies or something like that. Like the Avengers movie of, of labor with less CGI, of course. Now, this ain't just about cars no more. You know what I'm saying? So the UAW is making strategic moves like a chess grandmaster on a caffeine rush. They started with a soft rev at one key plant from each of the big three and then put the pedal to the metal, escalating when needed. It's like basically when your Uncle G is, is, is going to the family barbecue, you know what I'm saying? He's over there at the cookout and, and he's starting small with the appetizers before going straight meats all night. Straight meats. Pause. <laughs> Straight meats. <laughs> I, I guess. Do you have to say pause if you say straight meats? <laughs> my, my, my bad. Oh, okay. I love doing this. <laughs> but, and here's where it gets juicy. The service industry might need to take notes because... Just like how every coffee has this unique bean, and I'm looking at you, pumpkin spice latte, tis the season. Every industry has its choke point, and the UAW is basically saying, why go after the whole menu when you can focus on the best selling item? The key takeaway here is if you want to make an omelet, you know what I'm saying, you got to crack some eggs, and the UAW isn't just cracking eggs, they're whipping up a labor movement souffle that could change the breakfast for workers everywhere. Here's the hoping that as this movement spreads, we'll all get a bigger slice of the pie, or at the very least, a more decently sized piece of toast. So the long and the short of it is basically with the success of what's been taking place with the labor unions for the auto workers, other labor unions are starting to take note of how successful they've been and saying, hey, you know what? Why don't we follow suit? The unfortunate thing is you're gonna have, uh, not every industry is able to pull pull it off as successfully as Ford was able to in that when Ford was able to say, OK, well, if one of your if we, they'd like to start off at one of the one of the plants or if they wanted to say, OK, we're going to say. Um, we'll start the the strike at one particular plant. They'll start it at that one particular plant. Then as things as they want to ramp things up, they'll start spreading it to other plants throughout um, so they can adjust the volume and the the intensity of the the the, the strike almost at a, at, at a moment's notice whereas with certain industries like in hospitality it may not be as easy to do that and 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 some other things you got to kind of think about at the same time is you got to think about that pushback because okay so if you're on if if you're on that side of you're saying you know i'm on the side of the the owners and and i've got my workers are saying hey give me give me give me give me give me i'm like okay well fine i'll give you for now but in, in the meantime in between time i'm going to try to figure out how i can find some sort of uh cheaper alternative so maybe i'll start opening up my plants in mexico ha ha says the UAW because they're already thinking about um, reaching out to auto workers and, and the like in Mexico 
just to make sure that they have that worker solidarity across the border so that way they don't have to worry about being undercut by their brothers down south so i just think this is about to be you know and, and if this ends up going into you know transferring across different industries you know whereas at any point an industry could be turned off because the people decide to turn it off what do you think that could end up being or what do you think the outcome of something like that could end up being for the people who are on neither sides of this and just need to use the service or, or need the people who are providing whatever the people are providing who are now on strike. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. And with that said, this has been the Black Man Show. I am Seven Black Men. Be sure to let me know what you like, didn't like, agreed with, or didn't in the comments section and hit that like and subscribe as we continue to grow this thing out. And you can definitely still share it with your mom. Um, hit us up for content ideas or to be a sponsor, um, just like our friends at Bandana Boy. Big thanks to them, and their link is in the description below. Or you can just say, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Send us a line at showtheblackman at gmail.com and you can hit us up on all the socials at showtheblackman. I appreciate each and every one of you. Even if you drive a Pontiac, just know that I ain't rolling with you uh, for safety reasons. But other than that, y'all take care of each other until next time. Peace.